Okay, so uh, let's pray first, and then we will uh, get into the class. Can somebody please lead us with a word of prayer? Father, we come to the throne of grace, Lord. Thank you for this day you have with us, Lord. Lord, as we are learning, we are going to learn about the authority, Lord, you have given to your disciples, to your believers, Lord. Lord, <clears throat> give us your knowledge, Lord. Give us your fear, Lord, so that we can learn all the things, Lord, whatever is being taught, so that we can add it to our knowledge, Lord, and we can do your work you have assigned into great commission, Lord, very effectively and, with, Lord, with great compassion, Lord. Thank you for this opportunity that we are learning about this, Lord, believers authority and believers, Lord. Thank you for this day, Lord, and thank you for everything you have done to, Lord, done, done us for, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Sid. Thank you for praying. Um, we will follow along our notes so in the last class we talked about demons we understood that they are disembodied spirits and they have a structure uh, they're led by satan and you know they also have um, some characteristics they tend to see tend to be very specialized in what they do so we saw the different categories under which we could classify uh, these demon spirits and we got some insight. Now, we also said that all this study is so that we can minister to people who are oppressed um, in a more effective way. Now, in that same chapter on page 20, there's a short note on angelic beings. Remember, we said that Lucifer, uh, that is Satan, uh, before he was cast down, Lucifer is also an angelic being. Okay, he uh, was cast down with one third of the angels from heaven. And now he is opposing God and his purposes. But then you have two thirds of angels who continue to serve and minister unto the Lord. So a little bit of understanding about these angelic beings also is helpful. So there is a short note there. We are told that angels have been created to serve. Uh, in other words, minister. The word minister is service. Okay, So they have been created to serve or minister. The way in which they minister unto the Lord is through worship and um, uh, other ways that God uh, delegates them to do. So we, we will look at that. So primarily their role is ministry or service. Now, there are two uh, major categories of angels. One would be called the cherubim. The other would be called the seraphim. The seraphim uh, class of angels are, you know, uh, we would know them from uh, the book of Isaiah. You, know, you have these angels who are worshipping the Lord. They are uh, flying around uh, him. They have six wings. They, they have six wings. Uh, you also read about them in the book of Revelation. So these are the seraphim you know, in the presence of God, the six winged angels who are just worshipping the Lord and they're around the throne of God. And the seraph, uh, the, the cherubim angels um, have many roles. Now they have uh, been delegated with different kinds of responsibilities. You might recall angel Gabriel is one who brought a message to Mary. So messenger angels, you know, they came to uh, give a message or make an announcement, heavenly announcement, or you can call Gabriel as a heavenly announcer. Um, you have warring angels. When you read in the book of Jude for the body of Moses, uh, the archangel Michael is at war. Okay, so he is a warring angel. You have legions of uh, warrior angels all this uh, inference is from scripture i'm not reading the passage uh, for for us but it is all there in our notes so you have a, a class of angels known as angelic warrior legions so you have them you have angels uh, that 
are called as plague angels or destroying angels that bring forth divine judgments. The book of Revelation, you will see the angel came and then this happened, that happened. So they were bringing the judgments with them. So they are known as the plague angels or the destroying angels. Again, they are working in line with the purposes of God. Then you have the ministering angels okay, or the angels which um, are like waiters or attendants they are present you know at all times they are present and activated to protect the uh, believers okay so these are the ministering angels so this is uh, these are all the functions of the angels that come in the category of cherubim okay so while we understand that demons are fallen angels we should also understand that uh, you know there are two thirds of the angelic beings who continue to uh, worship the Lord and continue to perform what God is telling them to do. So any thoughts, any questions on angels before we move further into our study? Okay, so if you do have a question uh, later on as well, uh, it's fine. You, know, you can always um, stop and ask. Uh, we'll continue then. I'm on page 22 now, methods of workings. So, uh, so far we have a background. We know about the origin of Satan. We know about uh, his kingdom, the structure that he has demons, he works through his demons. Now, what we will study is the methods. What are some of the common methods that Satan uses? Now, the more you study about Satan, what you recognize is that it's it's a counterfeit. Okay, it's a it's a copy, but a poor copy of who God is and what God does in everything. He tries to deceive. He will try to promote something as knowledge, but it will end up in bondage. He will try to promote something as um, blessing, but you know it will end up in destruction. He'll try to promote something as um, uh, you know uh, welfare, and that leads to uh, chaos. So. That's his way. He he tries to copy things in the kingdom. Now, even if you look at the structure of his kingdom, you would think, wow, you know, there are specialized demons who do all the... But, you know, he has understood God and God's structure. Because in the kingdom of God, you have... God is so... Uh, God of plan, God of design, God of organization. All that already exists with God. So what is Satan doing? Just copy, create a counterfeit, and try to function, you know, uh, to gain uh, his goals and his motives. And that's how he chooses to do it. So when it comes to the workings of Satan, the way he uh, tries to destroy you know, this world and uh, mankind that is made in the image of God, he has followed some tactics. And maybe we could call it fortunate that those tactics seem to be the same that he uses in different ways through generations. So that way, when we understand his tactics, we can be in a better position to deal with him, you know, whenever uh, we, we come across uh, any such thing going on in our lives. Uh, now, when you look at scripture, 2 Corinthians 2.11, it says that we should not be uh, ignorant of the devices of the enemy. Devices is, they are schemes, they are plots. If you've read uh, in school, you have all those books, right, where uh, novels, where you have all these plots and you're trying to figure out, hey, what was the plot? Uh, who is the real culprit in this case? But it's so twisted and uh, manipulated that 
it's hard to find the culprit so satan has become an expert in his devices schemes plots manipulation so he comes up with all these schemes to entrap people so he has all these devices we need to know that okay when uh, we are in warfare uh, anyone who is a, in the you know armed forces will tell you that they do study their opponents they do study uh, 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 their enemies because if you don't know that they are going to use a certain kind of uh, certain kinds of weapons we may not have the defense for that isn't it so it's good to know what are these weapons what are these methods that the enemy uses on us and of course uh, paul very clearly told the believers the devil has devices he has schemes plots so please don't be ignorant when believers say no i don't want to know i just want to follow god it's a very naive way of uh, living a believer's life because we are we are on the front lines we are in a battlefield this earth is infested with the work of the evil one and uh, whether we like it or not he constantly tries to interfere but we need to be aware be smart enough okay i i figured out this is a scheme of the devil i'm going to cancel i'm going to destroy it. so he has all these schemes devices plots and uh, you know he has his methods of working uh, in our notes here there's a nice classification okay um, i will see if i could yeah just a moment so that you can have a look at it then you know you want to be confused in case you're not seeing the yeah i hope you can see oh no not this one no, it's not giving me an option to... sorry about that yeah this should work yes can you see it now yes ma'am oh, okay wonderful wonderful so uh, the methods of working they have been listed here for us uh, and uh, it's really helpful you know it, it's uh, we've classified it just for our understanding he engages in temptation intimidation intrusion oppression uh opposition deception oppression possession domination and empowerment so these are some of the common methods uh and so when we understand it you know we will be in a better position to deal with it now i also want you to look at this chart over here then we will discuss okay do you see a progression here it is a progression uh and that is why you have an arrow increasing levels of demonization so i have a good look at this uh there is influence initially then there is oppression then there is possession and then there is empowerment okay so uh what we are saying is the enemy uses all of his methods and through that he is trying to gain maximum ground maximum control in the life of a person his initial attacks may be through temptation deception intimidation intrusion opposition now all of these tactics we will get into them uh, in depth uh, soon but one thing about all these methods is they can be external in a sense okay so i'm just going uh, going somewhere and uh, um, i i look at this you know beautiful uh, jewelry or something and i'm so tempted i'm like wow i love this jewelry i need to buy it you know i'm i'm completely tempted maybe i don't have the money to buy it but i'm thinking i really want it so 
it's an influence on what again notice that his way of starting off uh with a person is their mind so he puts a thought he puts uh, a suggestion in our minds and uh, i'm talking about like a simple temptation so temptation starts as an influence over the person similarly you know deception no just do this write that email to your boss uh, he will never know he will never know what uh, you know you actually did but you can just share some other numbers no problem nothing will happen you know you will get your promotion so what is that suggestion in our minds it's a dis- deceiving thought we know from god's word god's word says he who walks in integrity walks securely but he who uh, uh, what he who twists his ways will be found out so that's what the word of god says so if i don't know the word if i'm not living by the word i am a good target for the enemy deception he's trying to tell me ah okay you will get the promotion try to do all these things in your workplace deception intimidation intimidation again all these are influences on us and we must really be ready to resist them intimidation is uh causing fear nothing has happened but he can put thoughts in our minds and say hey what's going to happen to uh you know your money what's going to happen to um your family so he's just putting all these negative thoughts and the more i give into it what happens remember this chart is showing an increasing level of demonization demonization is greater influence uh, that the demons are getting okay so that's what it is like don't get all panicky with demonization what is that greater level of uh, influence on our lives so the more i give in i just shared about three simple methods of the enemy now let's say as an individual i give in to the enemy then he can move further he can cause oppression in my life now oppression also uh, you know from just an external kind of an influence uh, it could show up in me in the person that i am we know that human beings are tripartite right there we have spirit soul body so he can begin to uh, work in my body or in my mind in my soul uh, in my emotions in my will power maybe i might feel that i'm losing my ability to make decisions or to say no slowly i'm losing that ability so what's happening greater influence okay he's gaining greater greater influence then moving further ahead when an individual has been so uh, uh, you know so much influenced by uh, satan and demons they can also come to a level of possession okay now talking about possession for a christian we never use the term possession because the scriptures tell us that the holy spirit lives inside of us okay the holy spirit lives on the inside of us so uh a uh, uh, christian cannot be possessed by a demon you can only have one kind of a spirit dwelling in you it's either the holy spirit or it's a demon spirit but for every believer even if they are coming under you know what we are saying right influence oppression the holy spirit is still there in us and that is the good news that we can be overcomers even if the enemy is trying to do all these things with the power of the holy spirit so we can take charge and break you know what satan is doing uh, but you know a lot of believers are not aware of that so possession is mainly the term is used for an unbeliever when the holy spirit doesn't dwell in that person you know, for a believer we already said uh, scriptures say know ye not uh, you know you, that your body is the temple of the holy spirit Okay, and the spirit of God fills us. So, only an unbeliever, when we say someone is possessed, for an unbeliever that terminology is correct. For a believer, instead of possession, we can use the word demonized. Okay, and I'll tell you why. Because when it comes to possession, right? Uh, 
we might see that the demons have taken control of the faculties of the person. Okay, I'll tell you what I mean by it. Now, an individual who is possessed, and that person is not a believer. He does not have the Holy Spirit dwelling inside him. When the demon spirits take charge, if you recall Legion, he's talking, who are, uh, you know, you are the son of God. Why have you come here to torment me before my time? Why have you come to torment us before our time? Who is speaking? It's not the man. It's the demons. So they have taken control of the, you could say, the faculty of speech. Maybe the person doesn't want to say it, but the demons are now utilizing you know, that uh, his vocal cords and they are communicating. Similarly, when you look at people who are possessed, we use the term manifestation. Manifestation is uh, when the person behaves in a uh, in in a in an abnormal manner that indicates that there is a demon uh, that has taken control of this individual. That is called as manifestation. And manifestations can be all kinds uh, of manifestations. Maybe just facial expressions. You know, a person who's calm and normal suddenly has an angry face, and you're wondering what is happening. The demons have taken charge of the faculties. Okay, the even the facial expressions are being controlled by the demons, not by the person anymore. And we call that a manifestation. Or uh, the person, uh, a demon of fear. You might see that the person is looking very scared, suddenly looking so scared. But you can recognize, okay, this is a manifestation of the spirit of fear or depression. Okay, again, let me clarify: not all depression is demonic. So we must never uh, use the, uh, uh, th that conclusion you know, across the board. But sometimes when there is a demonic uh, influence and the person is possessed by a spirit of depression, you might find that the person's expression is very sad and you're thinking, what's happening? But it is the manifestation of that spirit of depression or, you know, the person is crying entirely or the person is being violent, not just facial expression, even bodily uh, faculties. You know, I've heard pastors telling me when they went to cast out demons, there's a very young girl in a house. She has the strength to carry a, a cot. She just raised it with her hand, one hand. And they're all looking at her thinking, how did she do that? because it's not her anymore. The demons have taken charge of the faculties. Okay, So things like that, we call this as manifestation, the way uh, it is demonstrated in the physical realm, you know, this possession. Now, again, when you talk about possession, <laughs> it can be part-time uh, or it can happen the whole time. So part-time is a normally functioning human being. This person is going to work. They are um, taking care of their responsibilities at home. Uh, things are going seemingly in a normal way. But from time to time, you find that the demons are acting up. And you realize, oh, why is this person suddenly so violent? Or, you know, sometimes we have, you know, prayer, when, when there's prayer and worship going on, suddenly you find some demons start manifesting because they cannot stand God's presence. So only at certain times the manifestation is visible to us. So we term that as part-time. Okay. However, there are people who may be so taken over, so influenced by the demon spirits that they are constantly, uh, you know, in, in um, sort of that, that state that the, enemy, that the demons want that person to be, like Legion. Remember, he sat uh, um, uh, far away. He was an outcast. He, he was uh, not part of the city. So... He, he was so destructive to the people that they had chained him, right? And they had put him away because constantly causing, uh, uh, 
you know chaos constantly being violent and unproductive for the uh, the community so there can be times when you find that some people are the whole time they have become a vessel for demonic activity okay uh, i've also heard about uh, uh, some uh, in fact i heard about one girl this also um, i heard uh, you know one of our uh, churches only one of our churches associated with apc that pastor was telling one girl um uh, she had become very sad because uh, you know some relationship something didn't work out for her and uh, unfortunately okay this is a believer girl it's okay, so unfortunately what happened is um, the that boys side right they did witchcraft and they did so many things because that person was not a believer uh, and because this girl was not strong in the lord and she started giving in to the work of uh, uh, these demon spirits she became so uh, weak and uh, uh, she was not functional so basically she was at home the whole time and her family was taking care of her uh, you know she she just couldn't do anything she couldn't think she was const- like basically the demon had taken over the whole time and you her, her family was only taking care of her for days because she, she could do nothing she could do nothing till the pastors went and they actually cast the demons out and then you know and also by revelation they they came to know what had happened so somebody had worked uh, witchcraft and things like that against this girl and it was working on her uh, and so they had to break those those strongholds of the evil one and set her free so you might find that people may those who are possessed they may manifest sometimes or they might be constantly in a state where they have become a vessel for the demons Okay. now i just want to uh, draw your attention to the distinction i said unbeliever is possessed believer we use the term demonized okay and the understanding is that the influence is greater than oppression and that the demons are now able to use the faculties of the believer as well it sounds uh, impossible but sometimes we see that even believers manifest like unbelievers and that's because of the level of influence that the individual has given the demons okay uh, so can believers be possessed no they are always possessed by the holy spirit but they can be demonized meaning their faculties can be taken over by demon spirits to the extent that they can manifest as if they were possessed okay uh, so we must not confuse so if a believer is manifesting we should not say that oh he never accepted christ no 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 it's possible to have a manifestation similar to a possessed unbeliever so i hope it is clear so we are quite clear now influence is your early stage oppression uh, oppression you know oppression i didn't explain to you we'll again uh, look at it later but see oppression mainly means overpowering if you have seen a wrestling match the stronger person subdues the weaker person so like literally when you're watching it the stronger person is on the weaker person you know they've taken them down so that is oppression so it's a greater level of influence where the person or the human being has you know they they've come under the weight of what the demons are doing that is oppression influence is it's a lighter way uh, to uh, you know uh, understand what demons are doing so they are influencing you you it's a lot easier to deal with it at this level than to deal with it at this level and similarly you know than this level and then of course you know this level so uh when we understand the tactics of the evil one uh and we become strong as believers you know a lot of believers 
who walk with the lord who study god's word take time in prayer worship you know at this level itself a lot of us we are able to deal with the works of the evil one okay and that's the good thing and 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 so you know don't don't get all worried oh my goodness this is the progression does it happen to everybody no it doesn't it doesn't okay and we'll we'll talk about a victorious lifestyle um, and all that later on but just for our understanding if one is not strong in the lord or if one opens the door for the enemy through a sinful lifestyle you know then that's that's when the enemy is able to take them through this downward spiral and uh, the situation keeps getting you know uh, more challenging now we have understood till possession empowerment okay empowerment is your last level so uh, this level is when an individual has become a channel for the demons so by that i mean the person is no longer living for the their purpose they are living for the purpose of the demon spirits and they can exercise or rather the demons can exercise influence and control beyond that human being on other human beings as well okay and you might also find that this individual is manifesting um signs wonders spiritual activity uh, are the signs and wonders supernatural yes but they are from the wrong source okay and these are all like you know uh, things to attract people towards the empowered individual okay uh, and we would see that people who engage with the occult people who engage with you know there are all kinds of movements these days new age this and that sometimes people desire they desire to not just be possessed but they desire to be empowered and that's where you know they can tell you your we've talked about this you know you, nobody can really no no created being can ever tell the future but that people they try to predict your future that we call it divination through a spirit remember we see that in the book of acts a girl with a spirit of divination and uh, paul cast out that spirit she was empowered and you know a lot of people were influenced by her so there can be people who are empowered they are empowered so they are wherever they go communities and large masses of people they can do signs wonders uh, and basically they can have a control on the spiritual atmosphere over places and communities and that is called empowerment okay so i hope that you have a good grip on these concepts uh, we if you if if so we can you know go deeper uh, and stop sharing the screen and we could pause for a moment in case you have any doubts or clarifications regarding this uh hi pastor so oh, yes, one yes john uh one quick question yeah. um so uh, and i think in the previous classes we discussed one of the examples which you shared like when you were in a hospital you saw someone yes. uh, coming with uh, and you kind of sensed that it, it could be uh you know it could be demonic manifestation yeah so pastor yeah. if we face such situations and uh, yes. do you think uh we can pray at that moment and uh that yes. person can be healed uh, or yes. um you know that uh my question is basically like this like if does that person need to know jesus before getting mm. uh deliverance from any demons mm 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 okay john yeah uh so uh, the answer is yes john we can pray okay the moment we sense that someone uh, needs deliverance we can pray um, in the context that i shared i i don't think i could have gone and done anything because you know the hospital security and the doctors kind of surrounded the person um, so i didn't go but from where i was i definitely prayed for him i i prayed and uh, you know like if at all there is a chance to go cast out the demon also i was like okay you know 
God, just uh, show me, give me the wisdom. But thankfully, I think it was a medication issue. Uh, and uh, after some time, that person had actually calmed down. So uh, that's fine. Now, the answer to your other question, no, John, it's like a person need not be a believer. Because when you see the example of Jesus, nobody was a believer at that time, right? But Jesus was casting out demons of unbelievers. Yeah, true, true. yeah so same thing applies. We can cast out a demon from anybody. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, so in, in if it is a public setting, then uh, and let's say one example that you are traveling in a flight and suddenly if you see one person is manifesting and mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's nothing much people can also do i'm just yeah. giving one uh, you know, yeah. an example yes so, so in that case if you have that you know guidance on the holy spirit you could yes we could do it right yeah yeah of course right. of course uh, john so that's what i'm saying no you begin to pray about it right. and uh, you you sense the leading of the spirit if you sense okay i need to go there and i i need to ask the per person you know can i pray for you do it. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Do it. Sure, sure. Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah, everyone, are you thinking or? Uh... <laughs> Okay, good. Uh, so, uh, you know, some new insights uh, possibly for many of us. So you can think uh, some, yeah, yeah, please. Go ahead. Sorry, one more question. No problem. Yeah. Um, so let's say uh, a, a minister, um, so, okay, he, so um, he is a minister of, uh, you know, and he's a Christian, he's a minister. But, um, you know, sometimes we, we sense in our spirits that he's not uh, operating with the right mindset or let's say, is using some influences to minister. Yeah. So in that case, would he be uh, empowered or he still demonized? Mm -hmm. Okay, John. Yeah, good question. Uh, yeah. So you're saying that the the miraculous from that person's life is like all false signs and wonders kind of a thing? Yes, yes. Okay, okay. Yeah. So yeah, uh, John, one could be empowered. Uh, we have to discern by the Holy Spirit. And another thing that we uh, talk about to assess you know, the prophetic word or miracles and all is the fruit, the fruit of the ministry. You could look at the fruit of the ministry, meaning what is the outcome? Are people being saved? Uh, uh, are people um, having that you know that that walk of uh, um, worship unto the Lord with the fear of God. Is it drawing people closer to God? So when you look at the fruit of their ministry, that will also give you an idea of whether these signs, miracles, and all they are from God or not. Yes, pastor. Yeah. 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 So if if you feel like uh, you know it's not, then don't uh, don't follow that person. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, yeah. My my question was like, would he be empowered or uh, is possible? It, yeah. Possible. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Very much. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Mm. In fact, I heard uh, of uh, some such testimonies from uh, you know, uh, like the church where I um, serve. We've had a lot of uh, African students uh, in the past. So many of my you know good good friends still now, uh, and then some of them shared uh, their experiences. Um, uh, apparently, like one particular person from the region from where uh, he comes, uh, people practice you know all these uh, spiritual things, and they try to gain um, influence over people and communities and all that. So uh, this person was also saying that uh, uh, there are ministers of God who are saved from such backgrounds, uh, but they still uh, you know, have that inclination to have that supernatural power which will thrill people. And they don't, they don't uh, focus on receiving that from God. And you know, they also 
go for uh, things like witchcraft so it was very confusing for me to uh, even understand what this person was saying but you know this uh, individual was telling me that uh, some such things are also happening there um, in in uh, that region so i feel like the answer to such things is the word of god you know the more we share about god's word uh, maybe people don't know once they are saved uh, they don't they don't understand god's word right and in that ignorance uh, they carry on with the old practices which has been a part of their generations but all these things don't please god because very clearly we see from scripture you know, god doesn't um, uh, doesn't like uh, you know worship of other things and uh, you know this kind of demonic empowerment and all that so yeah just something i thought i'll share Yes, Pastor. Yeah, thank you. Right, right. Yeah, thank you. So good. Uh, I think we uh, will go forward. So now we have a good idea about the levels of demonization and uh, also the tactics that Satan uses in order to uh, gain influence over people. So what we'll do is we will uh, start studying different tactics okay so the first one would be temptation and temptation is uh, quite uh, common uh, all of us have been through temptation uh, and we can see from scripture how the enemy uses this method and thereby uh, we can be prepared to overcome it so when we talk about temptation the first thing for us to recognize is that this is in the area of our mind okay, it's in the area of our mind if you go back to matthew chapter 4 where jesus had um, gone to the wilderness to fast over there you see that uh, satan take you know he shows him the kingdoms of the world and uh, he asks him from the top of the uh, temple like you fall down and god will give his angels charge over you but actually he was in the wilderness so how in the world was he on top of you know, the temple um how in the world was he able to see the kingdoms of the world it's all in his mind jesus was physically in the wilderness okay so where was the temptation taking place in our minds so that's the place where satan wants to gain access and that is the reason we say believers spend time in god's word meditate in god's word um, renew our minds because when we renew our minds we're not giving space to the suggestions of the enemy or even if suggestions come we are quick to recognize and discard them so he likes to target the minds of the people now temptation is common to both unbelievers believers everyone because uh, satan is against man who is made in the image of god then when we look at you know this this temptation that comes in our minds we can also study the life of jesus and see how he dealt with it another thing that hebrews uh, chapter 2 uh, verses 14, 17, and 18, you know, it tells us is that Jesus, he put on humanity. He's fully God and he is fully man, which means that as a man, he did not engage his godly privileges. No, he didn't. He was completely man and he battled every challenge of a man as a man. So, he put on humanity he was fully man and he had to strive against the uh, attacks of the enemy okay uh, in a human way but scriptures also point out and tell us that he was tempted in every way yet without sin and in fact the term used for jesus there is striving right he he was striving against temptation tempted in every way yet without sin so a lot of us might uh, look at the life of jesus and say jesus you don't understand you know we are 21st century there is a, a lot of um 
a lot of challenges that we have that you didn't have in your time you know this kind of temptation that kind of temptation but you know what scripture says he was tempted in every way at all points of life every stage of life whatever you and i are going through yes the the appearance of that temptation may seem different in our age and time but you know whether it is lust or pride or uh, you know anything jealousy envy he has been through it but he has also you know he he was able to strive in such a way that hebrews 4:15 i'll just read it out for us it's a good verse to always remember when talking about temptation yeah. um for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin so that is the testimony of jesus for us from hebrews 4 and verse 15 he was tempted in every way and that is another reason and of course he overcame but this is another reason that you and i can pray to jesus you know he will not um condemn us he will not say how could you you know how could you be tempted in this way he has been through those situations and he is a high priest who will sympathize with our weaknesses because he understands he understands the pressure of temptation okay so temptation happens in our mind even jesus was tempted jesus was tempted in every way yet he was someone who overcame temptation and that is why you know, we can look to the lord jesus and he can help us how does this temptation work okay we are going to look at that in depth uh, maybe what we'll do is we will uh, read a passage and then go on for a break come back and i'll explain the rest to us so 1 john chapter 2 verses 16 and 17 can somebody please read that uh 1 john chapter 2 15 yeah. uh no 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 16 17 john 16 for everything in the world the cravings of sinful man the lust of his eyes and the boasting of what he has and does comes not from the father but from the world the world and its desires pass away but the man who does the will of god lives forever amen amen so here again you know, satan's temptations have been enlisted um these are temptations in our thoughts they come as suggestions they could be imaginations but it's in the mind okay so here in this passage we see the lust of the eyes the lust of the flesh and the pride of life um i think i'll go ahead and explain this part and then we will continue so when you consider the lust of the eyes you know lust of the eyes is um when in our minds we we have a desire we have and uh, mind you temptations um uh, how do i put this so the word lust right it is an out of control desire Now, some desires are natural okay but satan um corrupts it <laughs> and when we yield to an out of control desire that's when it becomes lust so <laughs> excuse me lust of the eyes is where the deception is that if you engage in that pleasure through your eyes that you will be satisfied okay but it doesn't happen <laughs> instead it leads to greater bondage okay sorry class i think something with my throat maybe we'll go in for a break now if that's okay okay pastor sure yeah sure so let's take a break i'll come back i'll pick up from where we just stopped okay thank you everyone see you soon <laughs>